An excellent question. Let me answer that for you. So why is the biblical standard of one man and one woman, but throughout the entire Old Testament and everywhere in the Bible, we see different forms of marriages like polygamy or, or you know, prostitution and, and concubines and all that. Why, why do we push the message of, of, of one man, one woman as the biblical marriage when there's so many bad cases about it? But in order to understand what God actually meant for marriage to be, we have to look at when it was first initiated by God. Let me give you an illustration. So I'm recording this video on an iPhone, right? See, I'm shaking it right now. Now, if Apple sent me a phone with a working camera and then the camera breaks, I would then declare that the camera and the phone itself is faulty because the phone came with a working camera. Apple sent it to me, approved of it and said, your camera is supposed to work on your iPhone. So I then can declare that my phone is broken and faulty because there is something within the original design that is no longer functional simply because that's how the phone was designed. Likewise, anywhere we look for a specific topic within the Bible, we need to look at its original design to understand its original function. But when it comes to marriage, when we try to understand what is a godly marriage supposed to be, we look at the first institution of marriage, which is Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. We can take the Garden of Eden as the foundation of what God's original design was to be was supposed to be overall because that is the initiation of God's creation. And there are times where God doesn't openly convict somebody of an improper marriage because could you imagine every single time God told you you were messing up? He would never shut up by naming all of your sins. Actually, in the book of Leviticus, we actually see God condemning a marriage practice that Jacob had during his marriage, which was having two wives that were sisters. So the right question we should be asking is not why can we have different types of marriages like this? The right question should be how did God originally intend marriage and how can we apply it to our lives?